I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and I'm speaking with Mark Monroe, the writer of the HBO documentary, The Bee Gees, How Do You Mend a Broken Heart, for which he just received an Emmy nomination for. Uh, first question I wanted to ask was, uh, how familiar were you with The Bee Gees uh, when, you started work when you started working on writing this documentary? Well, I am of an age in which they infected me quite early with their music. I, I recall, um, you know, having the Saturday Night Fever album, obviously, the, the, the big album. That was kind of the age when um, I was of the age when music started really um, having a, an effect on me, right? I was probably, you know, 10 uh, when that came out. I, I don't think I got to see the movie at first because it was maybe too adult or something, but the music was everywhere. Uh, and I remember... I had an older brother who had um, uh, some Bee Gees albums, and uh, I remember trying to, you know, pilfer them in the in the in the night and uh, you know listen to them. Uh, so I was I was familiar. I was not so familiar maybe with the story, and certainly the story of their many careers. Um, they they have a, a several highs, uh, and and they kind of transformed themselves a couple times, and I was not as familiar with that. Uh, so I was. You know, probably most familiar with uh, the the Bee Gees. A lot of people are most familiar with, and that's the the disco era Bee Gees. So, uh, I I think for a lot of people, you know, the idea that documentaries have you know screenplays are or you know that are or are, are, are written is is something that's very uh, foreign to them. And I'm curious. So, and I'm I'm partly curious as well. What goes into putting together a screenplay for a documentary? Sure. It's not, it's not a screenplay as one would imagine a screenplay. Um, you know, when we watch our favorite movies or uh, the narrative movies and the actors have lines, and it's not a screenplay uh, like that. I think the writing of a documentary happens over um, a lot of different phases, and um, a lot of people are involved. And I'm, you know, fortunate that the writer kind of has a a role all along the way in a lot of cases. So. You know, you, you could say the documentary is written when you set out to make the story and you decide who you're going to interview and what questions you're going to ask. Um, a lot of that material makes up the content. Primarily what the writer does, right, is help set a plan, right, a structured plan with three acts, a beginning, middle, and end, um, uh, in, in terms of how the piece uh, unveils, right? Um, so, a lot of it is structuring. And then within each scene, because you may interview, I think with the Bee Gees, we may have interviewed, I don't know, 35, 40 people, each interview, maybe an hour and a half, maybe more. At the end of the day, the film is under two hours. So it's taking that material and kind of choosing, picking and choosing what moments um, will help propel the story forward. Who says what and when do they say it? Now, a lot of this is editing, but a lot of this is done on paper, actually, either uh, alongside the edit with the editors or uh, in a broad way before the edit begins. A lot of times, in order to just green light a film, you have to have a plan, right? You have to have a story of what you're trying to do. And so um, I will actually write out, you know, seven, eight, ten page uh, kind of very detailed outlines uh, of, of a beginning, a middle and end before the editing ever starts. And so a lot goes into it. And then obviously when you're working with the, the director and the editors, um, a lot of the writing is happening in the edit bay, obviously. And the, the, the scenes are changing in real time due to performance, due to um, changes in, in um, the story in terms of what's working, what's not, and what you kind of come to learn, the happy accidents that, that, that pop up. That you go, oh my God, this, this is a great turn in the story. And so... Uh, I'm working along with that whole team, trying to kind of put your best foot forward and plot it out um, with what people say and when they say it. So uh, going now, translating that to this documentary specifically, uh, what, how much collaboration and what was the collaboration like with the director, Frank Marshall, and the editors, um, uh, Derek Boonstra and uh, Robert Martinez? It was Full and complete and wonderful. Um, Frank is a very generous director and he's very clear. I think one of the things that um, you're always looking for in terms of working with directors is decision making, right? Is uh, I like this, right? Is uh, feedback. 
and is um, kind of a sense of, of guidance in terms of the story they want to tell. I think people sometimes think that these films kind of fall out of the sky and that that's the BG story. And, and what this really is, is Frank Marshall's version of the BG story, right? Like this is his take on the BG story. Uh, you know, they, they dominated popular culture for decades and they have a lot of life lived and you could have told a lot of different stories within that period of time. And this is what Frank chose. And so, um, you know, collaborating with him, giving him the possibilities, kind of promoting ideas that make sense in terms of a, a three act structure, uh, uh, giving him options. I think that's, that's, that was my role, right? Uh, and in terms of uh, Robert and Derek, who are fantastic, fantastic editors, um, you know, I'm like a third wheel, right? I'm like a paper editor alongside, right? So I'm like, a, um, I'm trying to manage a kind of a 30,000 foot view, right? Kind of a, a big picture. Um, um, while I think what an editor does best, and all the great editors, what they do best is they make a moment of real life even better than it was right, because of the lighting and the music and the way people say things, they make these singular moments just really pop. And my job is, is to try to keep track of the overall picture, right? Where does that moment fit? Uh, and how do we service it? How do we make it pop by what comes before it? And where do we go to next? Um, and I don't do that alone. They do a lot of that as well. You know, it's, uh, um, it, it's a collaboration. These, the, all of these films are or a big team effort in terms of constant discussion about what the film wants, what the film is, what, what the story is, what's, what's the best way to tell that piece of it. Um, so uh, I would say the collaboration was one of the best I've had. So uh, while you were able to draw from archival interviews, um, uh, specifically um, with regard to uh, Robin Gibb and Maurice Gibb, uh, who uh, passed away, uh, was there any subject you weren't able to find input on from them in those archival interviews and uh, it was and um, their thoughts on something was a bit more up the air you weren't able to go into it because you weren't able to properly get their thoughts on that on uh, on a certain subject. I don't recall feeling disappointed ever in those archive interviews they, they were, um, you know, they were done for something else but they were done pretty comprehensively in terms of their career. Now, uh, I, don't, I don't recall hitting a scene or getting to a scene and going, ah, I wish you know, Morris had said something about this um, because they hit all the kind of major moments uh, of, of their career to, to the date in which they gave them. Um, so I guess the short answer is no, I don't, uh, I didn't, I didn't feel like, uh, I, I wish he would have said something here. I think one of the, the beauties of these docs is that you get a lot of perspective, right? That there's never one truth, right? There's a, a whole series of, of truths. It's how, um, you know, people, you know, remember their lives and think about their lives. And so um, I'm never kind of like disappointed that someone didn't say something on something, because usually, there's a, a lot of views on a subject uh, in, in terms of a story like this. Uh, so um, two of the documentaries that you've written have actually won the Oscar for uh, best documentary feature, uh, The Cove back in 2009 and uh, Icarus back in 2017, I believe that was. Um, while you weren't the actual recipient, uh, did you still get to experience uh, Oscar night uh, when you, <laughs> those two films won? Yeah, I, fortunately, yes. And uh, each, each night was, uh, was uh, different in some ways and the same in others. And they were um, amazing experiences. But in both cases, I had um, great partners, great film teams, great directors who, uh, you know, included me in the, in, the, in, in the evening's festivities, as they say. And I got to go to the um, the shows uh, in in both cases, uh, all, just by the skin of my teeth, I got my wife into the shows, which is very difficult to do. You know, so I got to enjoy uh, uh, those evenings with my wife and with the film team and and the after parties and uh, you know holding the trophy and the whole thing. So yeah, I was very very fortunate. And uh, going to um, uh, 
uh, your most uh, recent uh, accolade. Uh, what was it like learning that you had received an Emmy nomination for your work on the Bee Gees project? It was it was thrilling, uh, to be honest, because, um, you know, I think we've all kind of tamped down our expectations these last couple of years in COVID. And, uh, you know, a lot of my um, work uh, is usually with films that are headed to festivals and the festival scene, you know, first it was all canceled and then it was became all remote. And, and you know, at least I stopped kind of concentrating on the end result uh, to some degree about these films and what happens to them. I'm just trying to, you know, work on them with my teams and try to make the best film possible and then see where they end up in the market. And so, you know, we we worked on the VGs all the way up until COVID. And literally, I think we I think we were mixing the day of the um, lockdown in California. Uh, and the plans for it changed dramatically, right? Of what we thought was gonna happen when we finished the film. And and so I kind of put it out of my mind, you know? I, I think I, with the rest of the world, I was busy with my family and trying to make sure everyone was staying safe and, um, you know, doing the right thing to try to not get sick or keep my loved ones safe. And so it caught me by surprise, to be honest. I was like, what? Like I, uh, I had forgotten uh, even uh, that we, you know, I, obviously we would be, you know, I guess put up or whatever, uh, to, to see if we'd be nominated, but I've, I've not been part of that process. So it was a total shock for me. Well, uh, uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best at the upcoming Creative Arts Emmys. And to all of our viewers, please like and like this video, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can ask Mark the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you so much, Charlie.